Hey, Brad. Yo. So we're already one game into the season, and the coaching carousel has already begun. Mm -hmm. um, don't know if you've heard, but Jay Hobson at Southern Miss, done for the year after uh, dropping game number one to South Alabama. Yep. Uh, in, a, in a game that wasn't as close as the final score showed. If no, South you, Alabama punked him, man. Exactly. Um, so Jay Hobson out of a job. If you go not that far, same division, the Rice Owls have not started practice yet. <laughs> so that means that there is a team that has already fired their head coach, <laughs> and another team in their own division hasn't even started playing for their game in October. 2020 is awesome. You know, Early, sometimes them football boosters will provide your family with a car or even house if you keep nice and quiet about it. They're going to do what now? Welcome to the place where if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying is a way of life. Just keep it down home, guys. Where degenerate gamblers can congregate in peace. Money, money, yeah, yeah. Money, money, yeah, yeah. Where screaming at 20-year-old kids on TV is just another Saturday. Every fiber in your bowl, and you take it, and you beat the piss out of them. I'm talking about beat the piss out of them. Let's go whip their ass. Let's go. Where game days don't end until the Rainbow Warriors say so. It hits the upright. Oh, my God. It hits the left upright. It hits the left upright. They are the bag men that Danny Sheridan never found. I'm with a strong ass offer. And it all comes to you with a splash of bourbon on the side. Woo! This is the Friends of the Program podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome into episode number four of Friends of the Program. This, I'm Brad. That's Drew. As uh, we get set for a recap of week one, our quasi week one of college football. Uh, look ahead to week two as Big 12 and a ACC play starts this week. Uh, and all kinds of other news and notes to go through. Uh, again, I'm Brad Tillier. That's Drew McCracken. You can follow us uh, on Twitter at FOT Podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at the same handle at FOT Podcast. You can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, Friends of the Program. And you can also subscribe to us by searching Friends of the Program on iTunes and Spotify. So make sure you keep up with all of our content because, well, when it's football season, especially, we're always out there tweeting out content. Drew, welcome in, buddy. Good to talk to you again. Thank you very much, sir. And you're absolutely right. It is getting to be that time of the year where it, it, my wife and I were just talking about it today, how busy of a week this is. And it really begins this week. And it's going to go all the way now until December 19th uh, for, for those of us in the college football world. It, it's a brand new kind of weird calendar. But what else? Is new? My wife said it's good to have you back because, well, um, <laughs> with the pandemic hitting, I got all depressed with no sports. And now it's like I'm sports overloaded with football back and some other stuff going on that I've just all of a sudden I've gotten happy. So, yeah, yeah, hey, no, hey. it's. And it's not to toot our weird. not to toot our own horn here, but going back to last week's episode, we had the freaking owner of the Kentucky Derby winner on here. How you know, awesome is that? Is it bad <laughs> that I woke up that more uh, Saturday morning and said to myself, "You know what? I should just throw twenty dollars down." We, we uh, had my race horse. I was at the track the day before in Houston and told my dad, yeah, I think Authentic's going to win tomorrow and didn't put nine to one down. Ugh. Don't get me wrong. We still made a little bit of money. Yeah, we not made a little. A ton of money. It's, it's a okay. Of money. But not, not so, what we're hoping for. So that's fine. All right. First things first. What's the pour for you today, my friend? This is what they call High West bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, don't know anything about it. Um, I signed up for one of those mail order um, right. Yeah. In fact, just one second. Let me grab it real <laughs> quick. Yeah. Mail order. Um, it, it, it's actually just this little, they send you little. Oh, my buddy like does this. that up in, up in New yeah. York. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I did the American bourbon and I have not gotten to, uh, the tasty to taste all of them. So I knew that we were going to do an episode today and I thought to myself, well, today's perfect. So I've got some high West it's American Prairie reserve. Um, and so far, this is as smooth as you can get right here. Folks, if you're listening to us and you're saying, well, how does he know what he's looking at? It's because of the uh, YouTube stream that we have going on as well. You can see what we're exactly. talking about if you want to see the color of the bourbon. I've gone if, a little more traditional, the Woodford Double Oaked, uh, always smooth, nice little orange at the beginning, uh, nice little it's, flavor on the back end. It's delicious. 
the double oat has to be my my go to pour. Like you know, I've got Eagle Rare uh, mm-hmm. is my is my solid for you know uh, an Auburn Alabama game, an Old Miss Mississippi State game for those real ones that I want to really enjoy. Um, but Woodford Double Oak is my every sa- every other Saturday pour. Um, it, it is a staple. It is it is as I hate to say as low as the bar will go for me now that my taste buds because that You're is kind in of no way shape snob, or form. I'm not gonna lie. I am. I am a very big <laughs> bourbon snob. So anybody that knows bourbon and goes, oh yeah, double oak is your bottom. Oh wow. Um, it's like you're not even gonna touch like Buffalo Trace, yeah. which is really getting rave reviews now. Oh, talking about a fifty dollar bottle of bourbon is his bottom right now. Here. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it, it, I feel bad saying that, but you know yeah. when your taste buds improve. I've been to his house. He, I've been to his house. He's got a bunch of, <laughs> bunch of unopened <laughs> bourbon bottles sitting here. <laughs> I've I've got an old Saint Nick that I am waiting. Uh, I am I am ashamed to say how much I paid for that. But uh, no, that if if anything good ever happens in like further in my life, like celebration night, that's what's getting open for that. All right, folks, we're going to transition on to football now because it is college football season. We are primarily a sports podca- podcast on occasion. I guess uh, so. Yeah, yeah. We, we come to you a little late this week because we had to wait for Labor Day night to finish up. We thought we'd have a really good game to talk about. And then, well, the Naval Academy forgot how to tackle. Uh, well, it, 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 and it's very interesting because someone brought this up to me when I was trying to make sense of what I was watching last night, Monday night. Um, in that the Naval Academy, imagine this, the three service academies, you don't redshirt. There are no no such things as red shirts. Um, you go in, you do your four years, and then you go out and do your other years. Um, so sports are nice. Like it's a good thing, building block for life, but getting you healthy and making sure that you're good to go in, as far as your service outside of football, that's where the real big thing is. So, you know, when people go, oh, Ken me and Matalolo needs to go – no, he did right by what the service academy wanted him to do and keep I, the guys safe and healthy. I get the point. I do. Mm-hmm. But you also have the example of Army coming out and just sh- shredding Middle Tennessee two days earlier. Right? Which, and and which, I get it's Middle Tennessee versus BYU. Okay, okay the go. level of competition just want to make, is, it's, it's want to make different. sure that's out there. But that doesn't excuse not being able to tackle a man. Or that is blown uh, off the ball every down by the offensive line for P1U. That is concerning because uh, as I heard somebody, uh, a, a football mind that I, I really um, look up to and, and, and have a lot of respect for, you could say, well, this is Navy. They've been running the triple option for since Paul Johnson was there back in the early 2000s. They should know this. Th- okay. You don't just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to run a marathon and then go out there and run, you know, 18 miles. Yeah, you got to practice. So you have to do it in practice. There's no way that at the half when it was 31 to nothing, Matalolo looks at his team and goes, all right, tackling drills, everybody. And then all of a sudden they're better in the second half. It doesn't work like that. You have to work yourself up to it, which is why when the SEC and the ACC and the Big 12 started their practice, they laid it out and said, okay, we're only going to allow you this many hit tackle pad days um, in it, it, as a part of your practice because otherwise guys would be going out there and doing it every day to make up for that lost time. Um, so, yeah, basically you just saw, and I think you're going to see a lot of other schools, yeah, we're going to go out there for another scrimmage or, yeah, we've, yeah, we've moved to. the scrimmage because yeah. that's enough to scare you into you have to almost. Well, we've uh, also got a few other games to talk about. Surprisingly, best game of the weekend was in San Marcos. Texas State and SMU played a pretty entertaining football game that came down late. Everybody else, you know, Arkansas State Memphis was good for about a half or so in the third mm-hmm. quarter. Memphis put that ball game mm-hmm. away. Uh, like an Army just rolled over in our middle Tennessee the other day. Which, by the way, while you're while we're just right there in a, in uh, West Point for the minute that we're going to be there, since it was a forty-two nothing shellacking, did you get to see any of the second moving down towards halftime by Middle Tennessee State? Did you get to see any of that clock management by Rick Stock still? 
I'm not going to lie to you, man. I was at a few breweries, so by that point, I was probably a few in and wasn't paying as close of attention to the game when it was 35 nothing. and I realized that I had uh, already – I think I lost that bet, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, you, yes you did. Yes, you did. Um, but your head was in the right space because it was a service academy, and they're going to not value football as much. However, that didn't matter. Imagine this. You get the ball with about a minute or so to go, and you're at the Army 40 and you're beginning to move in with two timeouts. Two. Dose timeouts, mind you. You don't use any of them, and the clock runs out on you without even a field goal try. Oh, that's awful. It, if, you, if you get a chance, you need to go back and watch it, because that – and I love Rick Stock still. Love what he's doing in Murfreesboro. Um, I, I definitely think they're in for, for some bad time uh, times this weekend as Troy comes marching in. Um, and our good buddy Barry McKnight, which, oh, by the way, that BYU-Troy game looks like it's going to be a lot of fun right now. Uh, I'll be interested. Well, no, the thing is, we didn't get to see Troy play this week. We, we thought exactly. we would. Mm-hmm. Their game against Louisiana Monroe had to be postponed because of some uh, COVID breakout at Louisiana mm-hmm. Monroe. So we still don't know what we're getting out of Troy. We think it's going to be a good football team. By all mm-hmm. accounts, we think that's going to be a very good football team out of the Sun Belt this year. Um, they're going to play an old rivalry in Middle Tennessee State this week up at Murfreesboro. Um, you actually said you might even try to go to that. Um, I, uh, schedules have changed, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I would yeah. be there if I could be. And I know they're playing twice this year. They're actually doing a home-and-home home with mm-hmm. MTSU this year. Um, but yeah, that Troy-BYU game could be really interesting. I, and I feel bad for BYU this year because have you seen what their original schedule included this year? I, didn't, they were I wish you hadn't play, said that. They were supposed to play Michigan State at home. Oh. They were going to – oh, no, like in Provo. They were going to get Arizona State. They had Stanford. Um, and I think they had either Louisville or Wake Forest or somebody like that on the schedule. They had a great schedule this year that they had pieced together and then lost it all. So just rough. Uh, well, and, just, and I mean, it, I was watching game day uh, – Saturday morning, and which, by the way, loved Kirk Herbstreit's yeah. uh, um, message uh, where he got choked up. I thought that was really, really well done and, and, and well said. Um, well, it was from the heart. That was the biggest key. It, that was the biggest key because I normally don't agree with uh, – I'd go about 70% of what Kirk says. I'm 100% on board with that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but – and I think that goes almost without saying, but should be said. Um. I didn't know that we also missed out on Oregon and North Dakota State this yeah, past weekend. Which would have been a fun How football game. How insane would that have been? That oh. would have been a fun – well, and the other one we're missing out on, I said Michigan State was supposed to go to BYU. I think that was going to be this week. And then the week after, it's one of these two, Miami was going to East Lansing. Oh. This was supposed to be the beginning of a home-and-home home between Miami and Michigan State. Oh. Because I actually might be I going hope, to Miami next year for that. Game. I hope. I hope that they somehow fix that up. Yeah, uh, because because Miami going to well, East Lansing, and 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 this week we're being robbed of Texas LSU, Oklahoma, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's there's some Auburn, fun, North Carolina. I know was going to be this week. I know you and I had planned on being in Atlanta this weekend yep. actually for that game. Yeah. Um. So it's. It's certainly a reconfiguration, but, you know, it was nice to get some football in last week at the very least. We got to watch a little something on the TV. To, to kind of bounce back to what you said earlier, this is one of those years where I'm just happy sports are back at this oh, yeah. point um, yeah. and, and that we're actually doing stuff. It was a lot of fun. That S- Like you said before, SMU and Texas State really whet my appetite for some real good competition football. Yeah. I know SMU or Texas State's not going to figure into the playoff or, any, or you know, I know they'll be in a bowl game because there's 74 teams and 76 bowl game uh, slots. So I'm pretty sure everybody's going to have a bowl game to go to <laughs> uh, unless something changes. Unless the Rose Bowl um, decides to hold off again. Yeah, I mean, and that might be it where the Big Ten says, no, you can't play either. No, that's Well, not, if the Big not. Ten and Pac-12 announce a plan to play in the spring, does the Rose Bowl hold off and play late spring? Well, the Rose Parade's already canceled. 
So you could theoretically do your Rose Parade around March 17th. It passed, it's Pasadena. Yeah, it's I mean, always, it's going to be set. Well, it, unless it's June. I will say I've been to L.A. a few times it's in June hot. for work, and it, it gets it a hot. little warm, and it's 100 degrees out there last weekend. Yeah. But usually well, it's in the 70s at night. It's in the 60s. Yeah. So you could really play the Rose Bowl and do the Rose Parade any weekend. Yeah. I mean, you could do it Martin Luther King weekend if you wanted to do it around a holiday. Um, You could do it, you know, Valentine's Day and just make it a red theme Rose Parade. Well, I think if they play in the spring, when do you play that game? Is it April? Is it May? When do you decide to play? Well, now that would be a good question. If they actually pulled off spring football, you would have to play it Gosh, can you imagine that having the regionals, the yeah. NCAA baseball regionals, and the Rose Bowl in the same weekend? Yeah, that'd be insane. Right around Memorial Day, be fun though. That would be so um, much fun. Um, all right, before we exit Week One, we have one more game we have to talk about. We briefly hit on it in the cold open, but we got to give some props to the South Alabama Jaguars for what they went and did in Hattiesburg last week. Because I don't, I didn't see that coming. I thought no. Southern Miss was going to at least win that game by a couple of touchdowns. They were a fourteen-point favorite. And USA came in, very first play of the game, punked them for a TD, and just kept it up the rest of the way. I'll, I'll bring up an old quote that, I, uh, that I, I rarely use, but I love to use. Mike Tyson always said, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. Yep. Everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the face. That's what ha- – you saw that in live action in Hattiesburg, Mississippi last Thursday. I, the question is, with the, the res- resignation – in Southern at Southern Miss was that booster influence because he has a winning record there for four years and when he took that job USM Mm -hmm. was in the dumps that's a traditionally pretty good football program that had gone to total crap about a decade ago yeah no that that was a program that really hit the skids um but traditionally Everybody has a dip. It's just a question of, is it a Vanderbilt dip or is it like an Ohio State dip like a few years ago when they had, when Urban left and they were yeah. under probation and everything. So it's a dip and then right back up. So everybody's dip looks different. Jay Hobson uh, was from Alcorn State or came from Alcorn State. Um, and I, I actually talked to a buddy of mine that um, is down there in Hattiesburg or real close to the uh, Southern Miss program. There, after I heard about it this morning, because it happened so late yesterday that I just completely missed it in my feed. Um, but uh, according to him, um, and according to what he knows, this was a, convlu- a confluence of events. Uh, this was disagreement with the chancellor, president of Southern Miss. Um, uh, Jay wanted to bring in Art Bryles a couple of years ago, I think it was either a year or two years ago, uh, or Kendall Bryles, I'm sorry, uh, as its OC, and that was shot down. Uh, This was a product of seven or eight wins every year, which is fine for most programs, but it's not... They expect to compete for the Conference USA title down there. And they also expect to churn out NFL products. Mm -hmm. Uh, at Southern Miss. And I'm not just talking about Brett Favre. I'm talking about a lot of other guys. Go back and take a look. We don't have time for me to go through them right now. I've seen them upset many a SEC football team. Absolutely. Uh, This is also – imagine this, um, and this is the way he kind of put it to me. He said, imagine that the USA game is the last game of of last season, Mm -hmm. the final game. Um, And that kind of put it into a different perspective for me because – yeah, at that point, if you lose to USA, it's the last game of the season, not the first game of this season. It's time. Um, it's also a product of the athletic director. This wasn't his hire. Jay wasn't his guy. New athletic director comes in. So it it was a confluence of – and Jay's not the biggest uh, uh, elbow rubber uh, with the friends of the program, if you will, uh, to, to <laughs> steal a line. Um, so it was a confluence of different events, uh, that, that came through at Southern Miss to change was probably in the winds, no matter what, it was just a question of when, because what Jay likes to do just wasn't working at Southern Miss. All right, Drew, we are going to start here, move on a second. We're going to kind of start looking at week two. Folks, we're going to let you in on something real fast, which is Drew and I have agreed to do a uh, five-game pick every week against the spread. So you're picking against the spread. The loser at the end of the year, cumulative, has to buy the winner a fine bottle 
and ship it their way or next time we see each other hand it off, whatever the case may be. Uh, we'll let you know what that bottle is when it comes time, uh, but we'll keep you updated on how that's going as well every week. Uh, but we're also going to talk about other games besides just those five every week. So what we'll do is we'll kind of start previewing week two a little bit, then we'll shift to the five game picks that we'll have. Um, and then just any other last minute things that we do want to talk about uh, before we round up the show. So first let's look ahead here to the week two, Drew, as we get rolling. The ACC and the Big 12 are going to get into action this week. Some of them playing conference games in the ACC um, because they actually were able to get some rivalry games in later uh, down the road. Others are going to play in the Big 12. It's all non-conference this week and a lot of mismatches, but a couple of interesting games. I think the Thursday night and the Friday night games are super fascinating. I don't know if you've seen the schedule just yet, but Thursday night, UAB goes on the road to play Miami. That is, that's a very interesting ball game. I thought UAB would do a better job of putting away Central Arkansas last too. week. That one was 45-35. The offense looked fine. I'm not as concerned about the defense because it is week one. Um, so I'm going to just write that off, especially with Central Arkansas playing just, what, five days prior Yep. Um, against Austin P. So I'm, I'm going to chalk that up to just a well-oiled machine meeting um, so someone knocking off the rust for the first time, really. Um, Which is but, kind of the angle I see with this Miami game. Yeah. And, and plus, I, I don't think the talent gap is as big as most people believe between UAB and Miami. Not not as much as you would believe. Um, Don't forget, FIU beat Miami last year like a drum. That, that game was not close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was so bad to watch. <laughs> that should never happen. And oh. it happened. Um, and, and In an empty baseball stadium at that. In a completely empty <laughs> baseball stadium. Gosh, good grief. I, I've seen more people at Tampa Bay Devil Ray games. Uh, oh, God. Or Tampa Bay Rays, excuse me. Um, no, I – and here's the other thing about it. When you talk about the talent gap, if that's really what you want to call it, um, Bill Clark has done an excellent job of taking off that Troy talent um, yep. that, that Troy's been able to figure out between Auburn and Alabama um, and some of the other SEC schools. He's done a very good job of picking off guys that Mississippi State and Ole Miss would have gotten back in the day. Well, and now they're in Birmingham. Not just that. It's only year, I think, two of the revival of the program. He's gotten a lot of players who weren't getting playing time at the big schools that transferred in knowing they could play immediately. It's also – that's also a very good point. Right, and that's – they've got some talent if they're at UAB. I think that's an interesting football game. Would not shock me at all if UAB pulls off the upset. The, uh, yeah. No, that, that, uh, yeah, I totally agree. Friday night, unfortunately, Drew, I, I, I teased it. It got canceled. I was actually really looking forward to SMU and TCU in the Metroplex battle. Um, unfortunately, that win is postponed to a later date. So let's move on to Saturday. And the first true conference game of the year for a Power 5 conference. Uh, and it is a game. It's one of our pick five games. Ooh, Syracuse okay. at North Carolina. This one's going to be very interesting, and I'll let you go first because I do have a, a slight inside edge. North Carolina so, is a 22 and a half point favorite in this football, mm-hmm. um, according to that's a big t- number. That's big a number. big number, according to big t- old t- number. Um, remember, now, week one last year, Mac Brown had North Carolina ready to play as an underdog, mm-hmm. and they took down South Carolina um, in Charlotte. Sure. Syracuse disappointed last year. Under Dino, very Davis. much so. They they were not the football team that everybody thought they were. Uh, I thought in 2018 they had made some great steps forward and then just really took a step back. I'm still not giving up 22 and a half points on week one. Ooh. I will take Syracuse. You're taking one. the orange. I will take okay. the orange. Yeah. Okay. 22 and a half is a large number. It's very large. Um, however, it, and I don't blame you. I don't know why I know this. Maybe it's because I just didn't do too much work today at, at actual work. But anyway, <laughs> have you seen the Syracuse depth chart? I have not. Then in that case, you did not see their left tackle situation where they have a tight end as their starting left tackle. Ah, that's not a problem. It's not so much a problem, but it lets me know <laughs> that they are concerned that their offensive line has been compromised. They don't have an offensive lineman. Yeah. 
I'm to, being completely facetious when the yes, left tackle is playing. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. If this is just a Gus Malzahn offense, that's not a problem because tight ends don't catch the ball. But, <laughs> but I something just tells me that this North Carolina team, I'm going to buy in. I don't. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to buy into North Carolina being like mm-hmm. exceptionally good, like not top of the top two teams in the ACC eight because they're kind of division. good potentially. Yeah. But like, yeah, like in a normal year, eight and four, I could see them because they're what, doing what are they they're doing? 10 games? They're playing 11. They're playing 11. So yeah, I could see them going, I could Seven. see them going nine and three. Okay. Well, well, I, with a bowl game. I, I, oh yeah. That would be a nine right. and two regular season. That would be a nine and two regular or an eight season. three regular season in a bowl game. Wait, one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Okay. Um, or or either getting uh, or either getting to ten and three or ten and two, and they have whatever. been recruiting better now. North Carolina comes into this game ranked 18th in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know Which there were a lot. Right of, years. There were a lot of Auburn folks who were really scared about this game had they been playing this week uh, as scheduled in Atlanta, and uh, North Carolina played some good football last year, so I can see. Your so point. I I will the, I'll go on ahead and just make this our inaugural switch or diversion. And say that this, uh, I'll take the key, I'll take the heels. All right, we're going to stay in the 11 a.m. time slot. It's another game I actually have in our pick five, so I'm just going to do it this way since we're going down sure. the time slots here. I think this game is fascinating. The number 23 ranked Iowa State mm. uh, Cyclones host Louisiana Lafayette. The Ragin' Cajuns come to town. Iowa State's only an 11 and a half point favorite here. And. This will be the game I watch at 11 a.m. Yeah, this will be my 11 a.m. game with the alternate. Yeah, in my order of preference for the beginning games, this is number one. Uh, you, you're not wrong because I love Matt Campbell. Um, I think he's an excellent head coach. I would I, love I for him. Two of the best head coaches under the country going at this Yeah, Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree. No, this is a bang-up ball game uh, and a great way to kick off the first weekend, or the first real weekend, if you want to call it that. The the first real weekend of the Power Five or Power Three, however you want to say I mean, it. this is traditional El Asico week, too, so we're missing yes, out on that. Is. We're yeah, missing out on that. Uh, we're not getting nope. it this year. But No, we're not. Yeah. But at least we get the Egg Bowl. For the uninitiated, um, El Asico is Iowa versus Iowa State. Yes, it is the <laughs> battle of the corn, and it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Probably going to end thirteen to nine on some stupid play, and yeah, it's just what's going to happen. Yeah, it's it's what does happen. Um, In that case, I love Matt Campbell. I love. I think they're going to be an excellent team this year. I think they win this ball game. Um, I I kind of hope they do, just for my own personal um, hopes and aspirations in life. Um, (laughs) But I that eleven and a half is a very a very tight, very tenuous number for me. Um, I can see Iowa State winning this one by seven. Like, I see this being a one-score game. I'm I'm with you. I think Iowa State wins. I don't think they cover. I've got, I do not think they I've cover. I've got Louisiana Lafayette here as well. Um, and, I, and I also think that that 57 and, uh, number for the over-under, I think that might be a little bit low. I do too. Louisiana Lafayette can score some points, and Iowa State's going to have uh-huh. to put the ball in the end zone in order to stay in this game. Uh-huh. They're going to have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, keeping 11 a.m. slot. One more really interesting game at 11 a.m. Uh, before we move out of that same slot. Louisiana Tech at Baylor this weekend. That is not on our pick list. Just a really interesting football no, game. Just a very interesting football game. The 18 and a half kind of looks a little bit interesting. I don't think Baylor can cover that. I, I see this being more of a 10-point game. I think Baylor wins, um, but uh, I, it would not shock me if Louisiana Tech uh, was able to make this one real interesting like, yeah, that's for a, Dave Aranda's Open. That's a game on Fox, Louisiana Tech. They've got some talent over there. They could play. Um, that's a tough little game for Baylor to start out with. should be interesting. I, I'm between that Louisiana Lafayette game with Iowa State and Louisiana Tech Baylor for the two I'll be watching uh, for the 11 a.m. slot. I'll check in on Syracuse, North Carolina on occasion, mm-hmm. but – Sure. Uh, that'll probably be more just to make sure the 22 and a half is safe. Uh, next game on our pick list. It is at one 30. It's at a place where you and I have been for a game mm-hmm. and we quite enjoyed ourselves yep. up in South Bend a couple of years ago, Notre Dame hosting Duke as David Cutcliffe comes to town. <sighs> 20 I, point I, spread Notre Dame at home minus 20. I, 
I really like what David Cutcliffe has done uh, at Duke, somewhat resurrecting the program back to the days of um, somewhat of Steve Spurrier, uh, back when they had their, their greatest uh, uh, success in the program. Um, I, I don't see them being able to put up points. They do have the Clemson transfer. Um, that uh, the guy that came in, I can't remember his name right now, uh, that came in and uh, basically delivered them a win that same day that we were in South Bend Mm -hmm. uh, again, at Clemson against um, Syracuse a few years back. Uh, He's now at Duke uh, when Trevor Lawrence went down uh, just for that one game. But I don't see any way that Notre Dame doesn't win this one by about 28. Okay. I went Duke with the points here, and I'll okay. tell you why. One, I just really respect David Cutcliffe as a head coach. Absolutely. He does more with less, more so than just about any coach in this country. To just go back one year, Duke opened up with Alabama and gave Alabama hell for about 30 to 40 minutes before Bama finally pulled away and realized it's they true. had a ton more talent on the field. It's true. I think – because the talent gap between Notre Dame and Alabama is pretty significant. Um, we, saw, we saw that in 2012, and it's done nothing but increase. No, exactly. I, I think Duke keeps us close. I really yeah. do. And okay. I, I don't necessarily think they win. But this screams two touchdowns to me. I don't think this is a 20-point hmm. game. Okay. I really don't. Um, all right. Next game, one, uh, 2.30 Central time. Uh, all our times of Central, by the way, as we talk to you. ABC game, ACC contest, Georgia Tech heads to Tallahassee, taking on Florida State. That's a 12-and-a-half point spread. This one is the toughest one on the board for me. I have no idea what to expect for either one of these football teams. I am I'm going to take Tech to, to perhaps win the game, but cover the spread because – while Florida State has gotten better, uh, they actually have a head football coach now. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> Their offensive line is still garbage. They do have defensive line talent down in Tallahassee. But Doug Collins at uh, Georgia Tech has also raised the bar on talent level at, in Atlanta. If he can get a fence up around Atlanta, if, if they can be real good real fast at Georgia Tech. The state of Georgia has – people talk about Mississippi and Florida and everything like that. The state of Georgia has more high school talent than it knows what to do with. And why Georgia didn't recruit it last year is still puzzling to me. But thank you um, for that uh, in Athens. Um, I I think that he's – well, you're not going to have, you know, a bunch of five stars. You're not going to have, you know, a top ten recruiting class at Tech. That's just not going to happen. Um Coach Collins has, has done a good job of getting some speed guys, getting moving away from the triple option that um, that that Paul Johnson ran for so many years to some degree of success and and some degree of angst to Georgia fans. But I I, I think that Tech makes this real interesting, real close, and has a chance to win the game late. And it wouldn't shock me if they pulled it off. I'm with you. And here's why, and it's for many of the reasons you just said, but also, don't forget the locker room discord in the offseason at Florida State this year. It would be a really good one. I don't know if that doesn't come in and play a factor, and I'd like to see if Florida State's going to actually be focused fully on this football game because there's been a lot of stuff going on between the new coaching Mm -hmm. staff and the players about – truthfulness and what's being reported and what's actually being said. It just, there's, there's a lot that bothers me there. And I wonder how much got tuned out in practice. It, it's going to be interesting to see when it gets down to that crunch time that we all talk about, Oh, when the, when the times get tough, can you trust the guy on the other side? I think the players trust each other, but do they trust the coaching staff to put them in position? That's yeah. what we always hear. I'm just the coach. I just put them in this position to succeed and the guys go out there and do it. Do the guys trust the coach? Is it cyclical the back way? Do the guys trust that the coaches are putting them in the right position? Or should I listen to what Coach Taggart said the last time I was in this position and it somewhat worked? 
Uh, two games that are somewhat interesting. They're not on our pick em list this week, but at that, uh, in that middle time slot there. And actually, you get to the nighttime time slot too. Arkansas State, they're playing again this week after you know playing a pretty good game against Memphis last mm-hmm. week for about two and a half quarters. Had their chances. So. They had their chances. And, and they covered late, which was nice. Uh, mm-hmm. They play Kansas State this week on the road in the Little Apple. You know, I, I, same situation as Memphis last week to me. I think it's a, a shot that Arkansas State could pull it off. More likely the home team wins, but that yep. game that game's at least going to be fun to watch, and it's on FS1. Yeah, uh, that, that will definitely be a, a part of the Rolodex. The game that I have to mention, it's going to be an awful, awful game. Blowout City. Bobby Petrino makes his debut at Missouri State in a three-game season. Wow. At Oklahoma. Two of Missouri State's games are against Central Arkansas this year. The third is Oklahoma. That's their three games. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't seen it yet, folks, go to our Twitter, at FOT Podcast right now, and look at the tweet of Missouri State's promotion of this football season. <laughs> If you want to see their mascot bear being coached by Bobby Petrino, throw a football over the mountains and then caught by the old white guy president who then does the worst end zone dance you've ever seen in your life. It's fantastic. You go check out Middle Tennessee State <laughs> watching the clock. I'm going to go check that out right after the show. I can't believe I haven't seen this yet. It's on oh our Twitter gosh. right now. All right, Drew, we start with the night games now. Uh, Clemson, the national runner-up last year after getting pounded by LSU in the championship game. They hit the field. They go on the road. Back to some old stomping grounds for you. They take on Wake Forest. It's – I love Winston-Salem. Um, that's where I met well, my wife. Uh, still have a lot of great friends um, in in the uh, in the old Dash City, um, which, by the way, great minor league park. Uh, if you're just driving through uh, the Winston Salem Dash, great ballpark to watch a game. Uh, I believe there's still a Sox affiliate. Of course, that might change now uh, with how uh, the minor leagues are um, kind of jumping around. I don't see. Uh, the claw fence being able to keep up with Clemson uh, in this one. I, I personally think um, that uh, Clemson might hit that 60 number by themselves. Yeah. Um, I know that, um, and I can't remember his name to save me right now. And I apologize. Um, but the top wide receiver for Wake Forest has already opted out uh, due to COVID. Um, that that's not a player that you can just replace at Wake Forest. That's a player that will leave a dent. Uh, you just don't reload that area. Uh, much like I think LSU is going to find out that they have a lot to reload. Yeah, um, we'll get to them in a couple it, of weeks, but I'm with you exactly. But 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 you but you see where I'm I'm kind of going to. You just don't replace somebody like that at Wake Forest. So I I think that the number is about correct, although it could be much nastier. Yeah, Clemson, Clemson is about a 33 point favorite, I think. If I'm not mistaken, uh, I've got it at 32 and a hook. Yeah, somewhere in that range. And uh, they should cover. They should win this pretty easily. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think this is much of a game. I think ABC's putting Clemson on just because it's Clemson. Uh, yep. But as far as like yep. entertainment goes, my eyes will be elsewhere. And I, there's some other games at night. Western Kentucky plays Louisville. That has potential to be eh, first half somewhat. That, that's okay. a fun little up uh, 65 rivalry. Yeah, it could be fun. Could um, be fun. UTEP and Texas, they go at it down here in Austin. Cool. Uh, Texas should just roll UTEP. If, um, if you ever want to see nuclear winter yeah. in a college football program, just go back and take a look at the history of UTEP football. <laughs> and then one that I think is interesting, but it's not the one that I have on our pick list. Les Miles better watch out of Kansas. They got Coastal Carolina coming to town. And yeah. it's, it, it's not my pick list game for our, our – and I thought about making my upset special because you and I are also going to pick upset mm-hmm. specials here in just a mm-hmm. second. I got a feeling that's where you're headed with that reaction. It's between the – it was between two of them. Well, Ooh, my, one we've already talked about. I, well, mine is actually our final pick game. Tulane okay. goes on the road and takes on South Alabama. ESPN 2, 6.30 Central time Saturday night. Tulane's a seven-point favorite. And I actually already, I've already tipped eight. my hand. I tipped my you hand have. now that this is my upset special. South Alabama goes 2-0. and You are taking the Jags. Wow. It's not a bad call. Um, 
if if I'm going by and I'm uh, you know you can get a point here or a point there at any um, whichever book you go to. I've got it at eight, and I like that. Oh, eight, eight, eight is what I have it at. Yes, sorry. Okay, um, so if it's at eight, I'm taking Sal because I the way that I look at football games is I always go with could I see this team blowing out the other team? Could I see this team winning close? Could I see the other team blowing out the other team or could I see the other team winning close? And whoever has the most of, because there's usually one has two, one has one. Um, I see, I could see Tulane winning close, like three points, three to four points. I could see South Alabama winning point close because it's at home. It's just opening up that brand new facility that's second to none in their level of mm-hmm. football. Uh, even though Lad Peoples was fine, it was a it was very serviceable. NFL likes it for the Senior Bowl, so obviously it's got something going for it, other than just good weather in January um, or February. Um, but I could also see South Alabama winning this one by about fourteen to seventeen. My thought process on these games, and, and I, I don't know what you're picking, but I took South straight up. I, I think they Whoop. win this game straight up. This Whoop. is why it's my upset special. Um, uh, and Tulane was a good football team last Tulane year. Tulane was a very Mind good football you. team last year. Um, if And they have been for a couple of years, actually. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the, the very quiet logo – Oh, that's uh, strong. I, I'm, I'm, I already have an order in for oh. the retro logo T-shirt because I absolutely want it. It's, it's oh. just amazing. Strong. Uh, Baby blue with the green and the pennant. Yeah. So great. Um, uh-huh. But I love the fact that South Alabama's already played. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that they've already played ostensibly a step up in competition and beaten them. Mm-hmm. Um, Tulane was good last year. I think South mm-hmm. Alabama has proven they could play already. They're going back home. Um, yep. Tulane's going to have to knock off the rust. And when I think about these games and I think about a game where I'm going to pick an upset for me, it's if I look at the spread and I can make a legitimate case that the underdog can win the game straight up, I'm automatically taking the underdog. I don't care at that point. And it's not, and you're not wrong in anything that you've said. Um, In fact, I would lean, if you told me that I had to take a money line on either one, without seeing the spread, without knowing anything, I probably would take USA. Just, you know what? They did it last well, the week. Line's gonna, like the money line's going to be plus 180, plus 200 exactly. range, maybe a little more, which is exactly, exactly which how is I will I'm play going. this game. Yeah. No, yeah. This, this will be a USA pick for me uh, on the money line just for the return. Um, what are you picking for the pick here against the spread, though? I think against the spread, I will take South. Um, okay. I think that that eight number is very high. I think it's about four, three, four to five points high um, for our purposes here. I like your pick, though. I, I like your upset pick. All right, Drew. You have an upset special to give us now, too. I, I tipped my hand because it was in our pick list for the game well, this and, week. And but... it was a good way to finish because other than that game and a, a very late kickoff in Lawrence, um, that's pretty much it for the evening. The evening leaves something to be desired, especially with how the day starts when you get, um, you know, mm-hmm. Iowa State and Louisiana, which I, I, I'm i not shocked that that's the ESPN, you know, could be the game of the day. Lifter. That could, could be the game, game of the day. Of the day. Yeah. It probably will be the game of the day. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go – if I – if I put you on alert for an under the radar, because I had the under the radar and then I had the, you know, out there, like the, um, Mm -hmm. the, the power, power three uh, upset pick of the week. Um, I I do think coastal Carolina might just win this ball game. Wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. That has quickly become a pretty good football program. Just like that too. Mm-hmm. Um, the shot the, you beach chicken to everybody out there in, in the shots land, um, in Myrtle Beach. Um, Conway, they're, they're in Conway. Oh, Conway, excuse uh, me, about apologize. 20 miles away uh, from, from Myrtle. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> Myrtle. Um, but still, great baseball program. Love the shots. Uh, hated that we had to put them out the last time, um, that Auburn was in the NCAA tournament and made their way to the College World Series. 
it's only four episodes and I'm finally mentioning that. But I'm going to go to Well, they also have something that Auburn doesn't have, though, which is a college world they, championship. So I think they'll, they'll ha- take it. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're fine. Which if that ever happens, I quit sports. If Auburn ever gets a national championship in baseball, I quit. But it can't get any better. But I'm going to go to Tallahassee. <laughs> I'm going to take the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. I'm going to take Coach Collins and the boys. I'm going to, they're going to ramble the wreck down 75, take off in Valdosta and hit Thomasville, Georgia, All right. and go straight down into Tallahassee. And I think they get the upset win very late in the game. Very, very late. This is going to be with about a minute or two to go. And it's going to come down to either a touchdown or a field goal. Not sure yet. Haven't gotten that far. But I think exactly what you just said. It was going to be what I brought up in this segment uh, about the players looking at each other and can you really depend on yourselves with this brand new coaching staff that we've had questions about since what, February, since Mm -hmm. signing day? Stuff has just continually tripped them up here and there. And, you know, this is what we're going to do. Well, this is not what we're doing right now, Coach. Um, I I think that those kind of make their way in, even in this very first week. I think we're going to be surprised with the talent level that Collins and the rest of the staff at Georgia Tech has gotten into uh, onto can- on the flats uh, there in Atlanta, just right down from the varsity. Um, I I think we're going to be surprised, not with Georgia Tech for the entire season. I think we're going to be surprised in this game, just because Florida State's still figuring themselves out, and it's a perfect time for Georgia Tech to find them. Well, on the bright side, Florida State won't really recognize that there are only about a quarter of the stadium there because that's been usual attendance the last few years. So, <laughs> ever ever since famous Jameis and those crab legs left, it it it's not going to look very different. Well, it, uh, you know, I know we joke about that, but last year Florida State lost their opener to Boise we, State in a came very. To town. In a very sad way, too. Yeah. If you watch that game, they were up what twenty four to three, something, something like that. They were something up a like lot. that. They yeah. were up by a good bit to where it was like, well, Florida State's back. Let's get the te- let's get the Texas trade out for them too. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it flipped. Yeah, I. Uh... You know, there's a few teams I'm interested in watching this weekend just to see what they look like. I, mean, I, I want to see what Texas looks like um, yep. just because they've got a lot of returning talent at Texas this year. Mm-hmm. I think for Herman, this becomes a little bit of a put up or shut up year. Um, you know, here in Austin, there, there's a bit of a short leash for coaches. Um, I, 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 I don't know. I think there's outsized expectations sometimes of the Texas football program around here. Um, I, that's just my opinion. I, I, I've, I don't think that they necessarily recruit the type of players they need to win on a national level. I and think that's what's correct. continue to burn them, uh, particularly in the trenches. That's, well, it, and it's particularly in the trenches. The other part that, since you brought up Texas, the other part that has really helped out Texas, and they don't realize it yet because it's just the way it's always been. But let me put a little bug in your ear. What if Jimbo gets it right this year? Yeah. I mean, A&M's a sleeping giant down there. They really are. Remember back. You don't have to go very far back. Remember back to 2005, 2006, and just look at Alabama. Mm -hmm. Because I put Alabama and Texas on that same kind of level as far as a fan base mentality goes. Um. You you had a program that had been beaten down by sanctions, by Auburn, by a lot of other SEC schools for years and years and years. And finally, they got the right coach that just sent everybody back behind me and just pull in the same yeah. direction, which that's what that program needs. Well, and here's the thing that I don't think a lot of people recognize about the Aggies. That place is stupid loaded with money. Like yep. – when I tell you folks, it's, I go to every time we play Auburn down there, or they play Auburn down there because it's the closest Auburn ever comes to me. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually went to the Bama game last year there because my dad's a big Bama fan and moved to Texas and wanted to mm-hmm. go. And it's like, yeah, I'll, I'll go to a football game, sure. Literally every time you leave the stadium there, as you're leaving the, the road going back out, there's private plane after private plane after private plane taking off of the airport and gone. Mm-hmm. Just one after the other. It's... There is more money down there than they know what to do with. And here's the other catch. They're only an hour, hour and a half from one of the most fertile city areas in the country for high school football, and that's Houston. Yep. If you put up a picket fence 50 miles around Houston, 
and don't let the talent get out of there, you may not have to leave that 50-mile radius to put together a really, really damn good FBS football squad. So imagine this. I bring up Texas A&M in this discussion of Texas because why you, you should always mention your biggest rival when you're talking about yourself. Um, imagine if Jimbo does get it right and all of a sudden that pressure cooker that is Austin, because I've flown into that airport, I've been on that campus, I've worked for the University of Texas um, in the radio department. They're all about themselves until little brother starts to look a little bit yeah. better. Yeah. And imagine, imagine the pressure cooker that's under uh, Herman right now and ratchet that up about mm, three quarters of the way around to full. Well, and here's the other thing. You know, Texas, everybody thinks about Texas in the glory days. And, and think about it. Vince Young was 16 years ago now, 15 years ago. With that, yep. that game, it was 2005. And when they got back at the Rose Bowl and they lost Alabama, that was 2009. So you're talking over a decade now since they've been in a playoff conversation or a national championship conversation. Um, But the other thing that you think about with Texas that I have to keep reminding folks ever since the formation of the big 12, they really haven't been dominant. Oklahoma has been the program. Like if you really look at the numbers, I think last time I saw Baylor was only one big 12 championship behind Texas since the formation of the conference. If I remember the numbers correctly. Yeah. So, and Baylor continues to get better and make damn good coaching hire after damn good coaching hire. Which I think um, they've done again. A hundred percent they have. So mm-hmm. I, I just, I really think Tom Herman has to put it together this year. And when I think about Tom Herman, and this is why I'm so interested to see the game. His teams traditionally do not do well as favorites. And I'm not saying they're going to lose to UTEP. They'll kill UTEP. Yeah. But sometime down the road during this season, they will lose as a favorite. They are, he is a better coach as an underdog. Always has been. He was at Houston. He has been at Texas. If they're underdogs, they play really well. If he's a favorite, I'll pretty much bet against them nearly every time. And the worst Nothing part to about this, this year. Yeah. The worst part about that is you can't really look at the schedule and go, oh, well, they played Baylor at home. They've got the game in, te- in Dallas. Um, you know, they, they, they host Iowa State. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter this year. You're, you're talking about, you know, DKR. It, it's a huge stadium and a beautiful venue. It's not an intimidating place to play. It's not intimidating. One, it's even less intimidating when there's no one there. And we've seen that before. It's a hundred thousand strong and it's pretty quiet. That's yeah. I, I've, I've been there and that's what I tell people. Um, you know, great place to go tailgate, mm-hmm. great food, great drinks, you know, but uh, good people for the most part. Yeah. Good people. No problems, but yeah. it is no not an intimidating place to go watch a football game. And I, 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 I could not imagine. I've only had three places rattle my chest. One Sheridan hair, one Sanford stadium and one's tiger stadium. I will say, I wish we had been able to sit lower last year at Florida because you and I were at that Florida Auburn yeah. game and we were at the top of the stadium. So it's a little tough to tell the noise level, yep. but that place was rocking. And I would that, have loved to have understood exactly how loud it was closer to field level. You're, you're right. Because the way that the swamp is constructed, it's, it's straight very up. up. It is straight, straight up. up. Like, you, we were next you, to the last row of the stadium and I felt like I was on top of the field. Exactly. It, that was exactly what I was going to bring up. You feel like you're right there on top of everything. And I mean, we are way like, if you look at it from floor level, well, I mean, we're way up. That's the thing though, way up quote unquote, but you work far. It's yeah. not like way up at Tennessee where you're sitting next to Jesus having a conversation. Yeah, you and the <laughs> Sherpa get the share of the tank of oxygen that you got with your tickets. No, it's not like that at all. You are on top of the action at Florida, uh, yeah. which is something that I really appreciate uh, yeah. with how that stadium was constructed um, and something that I really enjoyed, even though I enjoyed every time Florida got the ball almost because Derek Brown was just doing Derek Brown things. Um, but, but no, it's, it, it's, it's very interesting how that stadium loses mm-hmm. sound while others are so good at keeping it in. Yeah, I think you're talking about Texas for losing sound there versus... Yes, 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 absolutely. All right, folks. Well, that's going to wrap it up. The drinks are gone. That means we are, too. 
hopefully you enjoyed the week one recap, week two preview. We'll do it again next week. We'll also try to get you guys a guest and start looking ahead to either the ACC or the Big 12. And then we're going to work on an SEC preview as well uh, a couple of weeks from now as the big conferences do get rolling this week. We're excited about it. Football's back. It's good to have it back. Just something to watch on Saturday. Make sure you follow us, by the way, again, on Twitter, at FOT Podcast. On Saturdays or game days, we're always kind of tweeting out different stuff, funny observations, memes that we might see, whatever the case may be. It's a fun follow. Gets in we'll on have the videos as well. I, I'm, I'm going to start, maybe not this weekend, but the following weekend. I've, I've got all my video stuff back behind me, so we'll be able to cut up some videos. Yeah. Um, and, my wife... And- my wife made something about flea market Montgomery when the opener in Montgomery happened. That was pretty hilarious. I, that was I mean, fantastic. I, it's it, just make sure you follow us. Cause there's always something happening out there. Plus you can oh, see that awesome Missouri state video with the, the chance yes. of dancing that if you, you just need that to right see. Now. Uh, I've got to go see that right now. <laughs> again, at FOT podcast on Twitter at FOT podcast on Instagram, follow us on YouTube at friends of the program. And then you can also do the same on iTunes and Spotify uh, friends of the program. Make sure you go and subscribe to us, follow us, all that good stuff, so you can catch all the new content as it comes out. Drew, always fun, my friend. We'll yes. do it again in a few days. Sounds like a plan to me, sir. All right. For Drew McCracken, I'm Brad Sillery saying uh, good week, everyone. Happy gambling. Hopefully you have a winning week. Make your drinks strong. Your bets hefty. We'll talk to you in a few days. Take care.